South Yorkshire Police now, you know. And my son hasn't been seen since Saturday. The door's open and everything's all over the place. Every two minutes, someone in Britain is reported missing. He's gone again. He's gone again. How to attend to pick up her children from school. I've lost plot now, totally and utterly, because I don't think we're going to find him. Every case is a race against time as police search for the reasons why. Worst case scenario, he has kidnapped her. Has he taken overdoses before? We need to get into that mindset as to what they're thinking and how they're thinking. And trace the missing person's last known steps. Two of them thrown in cabs and then he's disappeared. It's confirmed it's not uh, on CCTV. I'm going to put her on as a high risk misper. There is potential threat to life. Drawing on every power to make a breakthrough. I want in a telecom search for his mobile phone. This address is empty. People are at a dead end at the moment. In the mission to bring loved ones back to their families. He's on Stanford Road and he's bleeding. It's pressure because you want the ending to be a happy ending. We can't, we are with him now. Stand back. We're going to need an ambulance. Is this the day that we don't get him back? It's emergency, what's the emergency? Hello, uh, I'm 87 years old and I've been called down to my son's flat by his neighbours. He hasn't been seen since Saturday. The door's open and everything's all over the place. And what's his name? Gavin. They saw him on Saturday, but they haven't seen him since. It's been two days since 58-year-old Gavin mysteriously disappeared from home leaving his front door open. Basically what's happened is that his mum's gone to his flat about 5pm and he's, he's, obviously he's not there, so she's called in as a misper. It's neighbours that's rung me. They've rung me up to say they haven't been seen since Saturday. Right. PCs Toby Brown and Joshua Epworth have arrived at Gavin's flat where his 87-year-old mum, Brenda, is waiting. Door were open. Mm. Wide open. And they have been seen since. Okay. So you don't know what you, don't, you won't know what he's wearing then I take it today no, if you've not I seen didn't. no. They didn't okay. know. <laughs> Does Gavin have a phone? Does he own a phone? Yes, he's, well he has, but we don't know. Straight to voicemail. For someone just to leave the house unlocked and insecure, obviously is quite alarming. Could be a warning sign that something bad might have happened to him. Inside that address was a, a mess. Could somebody have come in and taken him from the property? Or has he just left on his own accord? How old is he? 59 on Thursday will be. He's been very hyped up lately. Right, he's got ill mental health, has he? Yes. What's he, what's he, what's he diagnosed with? Schizophrenia. Do you know what medication he takes frequently? or you wouldn't Doctor have a clue? Will. He asked him to up it not long since because it was vo these voices were bad. But doctor said he were on full whack, he couldn't give him any more. Right. He's got a wallet with his bank cards in it, anything Oh, he'll have, like oh, have all his money, yeah. He'll spend money like water. Right, OK. He'd left door wide open, hadn't he? That's when I panicked. He's very vulnerable because of his schizophrenia. Anybody could attack him, but he wouldn't hurt a fly. Have you spoken to the neighbour? At Woodseats Police Station in South Sheffield, Sergeant Helen Rogers starts directing the search for Gavin. He's not been seen for over 43 hours. Family haven't been in contact with him. The flat was left insecure. From speaking with his mum, it's clear that um, his illness is getting worse. So it's harder to know how he would behave, where he might be going, or what he is wanting to do next. Hello, sorry to disturb you. 
Do you know Gavin across the road at all? So I've got cameras up. I saw him the other morning. You can see him, he's sat on the wall waiting for a taxi. There's a car. Here he is. So here he is with his handfuls of bags lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put some in boot. It's ten past three in the morning. The neighbour's security camera reveals Gavin with a number of bags getting into a cab just after three o'clock yesterday morning. But moments later, he returns, taking more bags back towards his house. And the taxi leaves without him. That's great. Thanks a lot for your help. No, no, All right. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Whose address is he going to be going to at three o'clock in the morning? Is he disposing of stuff that he shouldn't have? It's not normal behaviour. Something's not right. Three in the morning is what's well, a bizarre time to go out with bags, mm. isn't it? Have you been in touch with City Taxis? Can we try and get that done? So we might be able to find out where he's actually gone and we'll see what we can do from there. Good evening, Good afternoon, this is uh, PC Epworth from, uh, I'm calling from South Yorkshire Police. I'm currently looking for a missing person. We've caught him on camera getting a taxi at 3am on Sunday morning, so we're just wondering where he, he would dropped off to because he, he was back within 20 minutes, so that address could hold some information as to where he might have gone. Hello. There's that thousands out at bank. Brenda calls officers back to the flat after searching through Gavin's paperwork. Hundreds of statements, isn't there? Oh, this, this one's recent. It's a lot to Amazon, isn't it? 359 quid. What would that be, a big a loan of 6,000? Would that be, do you know? Hello. Gavin's bank statements reveal an alarming level of spending. I mean, from February, he's, he's, he's had nearly 14,000 pounds. Yeah, what's he doing with it? Well, it's going down, isn't it? He's down to 3,000. He was a electrician for 15 years before he fell ill. Oh, what, sorry? Yes, that's where his pensions and that's come from. No. It looks as if he's in a mess, doesn't it? In a right state with his mind. If you obviously hear anything, then ring us. Yes. All right? It's very concerning, the fact that he is not a well chap, from what we've been told. Is he, is he capable of looking after his own money or is somebody taking over his finances that shouldn't be? Is he being exploited? Is, is he running away from danger now? Is he, you know, there's a lot of, lot of things that you're thinking about now. Because he had back in May. 20 odd grand, didn't he? His bank. Yeah. I've seen it. And then now he's down to like three grand. Is he? Mm -hmm. He's been in two or three mental hospitals in his time. And he gets these voices in his head now. But before that, it was at Steelworks in Stocksbridge. But now he's drawn all his pensions from work and spent the lot. It's like his fiction. It's like not real. They're not called back about it, have they? The uh, city inquirers, have they? Well, they, there's no trace of anything, which is a bit bizarre. With no record so far of the 3 a.m. taxi booking, and with Gavin now missing for nearly two days, police still have nothing to help them narrow the search. In Sheffield, a call is coming in about a student who has inexplicably vanished. Yesterday, he checked that he called the resident. He went to hand his keys in at the reception and then disappeared. Very vulnerable, he suffers from anxiety, and when he experiences the anxiety, his behaviour is not normal. Just not in himself. We'd like to report him missing.
Right then guys, um, so, medium risk missing person, he's a student at university. At Snig Hill Police Station, Sergeant Phil Mackey briefs PCs Katie Denton and Harriet Argyle to start making inquiries. He's been brought by his dad to collect some items from his student accommodation. His dad's waited outside in the car while he's gone inside. And an hour or so later, he's still not returned. They've had no further contact from him since. I think then the next thing is, is getting down to the accommodation and doing a good search of his room. Yeah. Trying to establish who he might have associated with in there. Yeah, of course. We'll check his room first. I mean, I'm assuming it's completely empty. The officers head for the halls of residence where the student was last seen yesterday. So it's B4. We have a lot of students in Sheffield. We have all the, the unis around here, but we don't have a lot of students that go missing. Sometimes students, they don't get back in touch with the parents. Had they gone out, got really drunk. So it could be that he's fine. He just wants some space. That's beside the point. We still need to find them. Hello, security. We were sitting outside and he sort of came past and he seemed pretty normal then and he was just like, oh, hi guys, and we are like, oh, hey, you're back, because he told us a few weeks ago he was coming back to get his stuff. The student's former flatmates last saw him when he came to get his things. How was he presenting to yourselves? He was just manic. He wasn't like this before when he was here, like he'd look you in the eye and have a normal conversation. Then deteriorated in his weeks and you've seen him, he's changed completely. Yeah. He like walk, was walking in the hallway, back and forth, back and forth, 5 a.m. And that was like really creepy. Talking, using verses from the Bible. There's nothing else going on in his mind. It's just this religious, there's a God that he tells him what to do. He's not studying anymore because, yeah, God talking. <laughs> he started talking about some kind of church. It's like rocking on the street. He came in and then his. May came at about 1 a.m. He was with a friend, did you say? We didn't see the friend, but I talked to him over the intercom. Okay. Okay. Speaking with the students made me realise that this is a little bit more serious. They stated that his behaviour and his mental state changed drastically. They were all concerned about him and they were quite frightened of him. And we need to speak to that friend. Could I be put through to somebody in the crisis team, please? Back at the station, PC Denton calls Sheffield Mental Health Services to find out what dealings they have had with the student. It's just so we've got an understanding of his uh, mental health, really. Thank you. And the, 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 this church is telling him to keep his phone off and not to contact his family. Uh, they've also told him that COVID is not real and that illnesses is all in the mind. Meanwhile, PC Argyle speaks to the student's parents. Do you know where this church is based in Sheffield? Thank you ever so much for your help. They've basically said this month they did um, assessment at his student accommodation and he's become quite fixated with the church. He's been undertook by another student, but we've got no more details for him. There's a lot of concern by family on the instant yeah, yeah, detailing yeah. this church and that they're obviously concerned about his mental health. The parents said that they believe he is being radicalised by this particular church. There isn't anything wrong with having a passion for a church. Everyone has their own religions, their own beliefs, but nobody knows who this church is, where the church is. Nobody knows anything about it. And the things that he was saying about the church, such as he needs to just forget his family and friends and just belong to the faith, while he is missing it, that's worrying. Clearly this uh, religious aspect is having a major influence on him. Highly unusual. Right, let's go. The officers need to track down the church group that the student has been attending. Rockingham 
but they only have sketchy information on its location. We'll have to go around. We'll have to do a proper search, won't we? It's not listed currently on there, so I'm thinking they might have moved. Shall we look around the back? Yeah? But it's now 1 a.m. and there's little to go on. It's PCR gal. Okay, brilliant. 07. Bye. That'll make force control. Can I have a telephone number check, please? The student's parents have just sent police a number they believe belongs to the friend he was with. Go ahead, Katie. I've got a contact number for... A friend who's really heavily involved in the church. We've run the number through and it's come back to an address in Sheffield. Great. Let's just go to his address first. Because if he's there, what I don't want to do is phone up and him leave. Because he knows we're coming. Yeah, perfect. That's uh, what we shall do. Max, what's going on here? What, what's this about? As I've explained, we have concerns for him and we need to locate him. We are aware you've recently been with him. How did you guys even know he's missing? Because his father has reported him missing. I see. So I'm aware that you are part of the church. Well, he does come to our service, but he hasn't been for a while. OK. Since his parents doesn't want him coming. His parents don't want him to go. The first time that you met, how would you describe him? Definitely, this is someone that can benefit from studying the Word of God. I, I just don't understand. He's probably enjoying his life. He, he may be, but he may right. well be doing that. So, when you find him and he's in that state, are you then going to go to him and say, oh, you're a missing person, we, we just found you? We need to take you back somewhere or something. Exactly that. <laughs> this is just funny. It's not funny because he's a missing person that we have concerns for. Missing, Potentially missing. could have mental health problems. Mental health and problems. We need to see him. It's not funny. It's not a funny situation. I have your reasons to be concerned. Personally, you have to understand there's things from my perspective and there's things from your perspective. From your perspective, you're looking for a missing person. From my perspective, he's out there doing whatever he wants to do and his parents are on his case. So you have to do your job, but at the same time, I have to live by my principles. So let's say he could very well be doing his own thing, enjoying life, what have you, as you said. But what if he isn't? What if he is actually very unwell right now and potentially hurt physically, and we can't find him because we can't get the information we need from you. There's no information I'm going to give you that's going to help you find him because I myself don't even know where he is. It's okay. It's all very bizarre, isn't it? Just if my friend was missing, I would give you would... every bit of information that I had to locate mm. my pal. Didn't they say at the university that he'd, he'd been there been the other night at one o'clock in the morning and he's just denied that completely so something's not right, something doesn't add up. The student might not even know that we're looking for him but when somebody's down as a missing person with the South Yorkshire Police so we need to speak to them before we take them off our system. We don't know whether he's vulnerable or just wants a break from his family. Some people like to keep things to themselves. They may have had different experiences with police and not want to cooperate because of that. But when I meet someone who tells me that I don't need to worry about this person and I don't need to be looking for him, that makes me think, why are you telling me that? And that heightens my worry and my suspicion. The police's only lead has proved fruitless. Over 24 hours after the student was last seen, there's little chance now of finding him tonight. Good 
can I help? Hello sir, my name is PC Eckworth, I'm a police officer for South Yorkshire Police in Sheffield. I'm just hoping you can check to see if you've had any pickups. In Deep Car, officers are still trying to find out who Gavin booked a taxi with. He has schizophrenia and had been spending excessively before he disappeared at 3am two nights ago. I've got any names at all. Gavin Hawkins. We don't know what taxi company it is, but I've so sort of <laughs> just uh, try my luck. I've got a Gavin Hopkins. Mm. Uh, that that sounds like it could be could be a link, yeah, definitely. Eight minutes past one today from Woodall. Woodall yeah, Services. So that, uh, yeah, and we never picked up. The taxi never picked him up? No. Potentially, Marty could still be at the, the service station, so, um, Sarah, thank you very much. A caller using a similar name to Gavin's booked a taxi from Woodall Service Station on the edge of the M1 motorway, 25 miles away from Gavin's home. The call was made earlier today, almost 36 hours after Gavin left, but the caller had disappeared by the time the cab arrived. The missing person is Gavin. Things that we do need to do is going over to Woodall Services. At Woodseats Police Station, Sergeant Rogers is dispatching PCs Claire Howard and Charlotte Frost to investigate. He has got mental health issues. Is he on medication? Yeah. If it is Gavin that's at the service station, we need to know why he didn't get into that car. It's a very isolated place. There's nowhere to stay, there's no cover, and it's on the M1, a busy motorway. So there's obviously the concerns. If he's there, through the night, he could come to harm. I wonder in that hanging around the lorry park. Where are you? It's just weird, I've just got a feeling that, that is here. he's here. Is it just as well? to you to see if you've seen anybody I haven't seen anybody at all and if I do I will phone the police I actually am a homeless lady and I'm quite happy and I'm not missing as long as you're all right yeah I'm actually fine we're looking for somebody well, who's right, missing then. you have a nice evening okay you too yes, we will. thank you with no obvious sign of Gavin they start questioning the station staff about whether they've noticed anyone behaving unusually there was one guy was wandering about. He was telling the, telling the people he's a millionaire. He was doing oh, what? He was he's sending a, his a million. Rich man. Right. He was on the north last night. He was on the north last night. Yeah. Uh, um, behind the smoking shed. Yeah. I've not seen him. There's been nothing of no. him tonight. The best place to be is the forecourt. Yeah, right. Uh, We're looking for a missing person. The first time I saw him, he didn't have a top on or anything. What? Nothing. Just no. complete. The forecourt manager also encountered the man who was acting strangely last night. He was just buying like random things. Like what? Like, like torches. He bought a, a yellow jacket. Yeah, yeah. Loads and loads of cigarettes. Yeah. Just random Is things to the point where I just stopped serving him. I'm like, you don't need all this. Yeah. Did he say what he needed it for? No. What was he wearing when you last when you last yeah, saw him? Uh, a brown leather jacket. A brown leather jacket, right, okay. Because he tried getting in a woman's car. Did he? Right. Right, okay. okay. Well, well thank you for the information. Yeah. When I heard that this male was buying uh, random things, spending money, opening car doors and particularly asking uh, a lady for a lift is obviously worrying. So if that is Gavin. Um, my concerns are growing because it sounds like he is very vulnerable. Do you know on the incident, does it say if his mum has access to his bank account at all? I don't know, you might have to speak to mum. Police need to find a way of linking Gavin's spending to the man at the service station. I know they reported at the service station that he's been using his card there so it's just to see if she knew any of his bank account details if she could access it. PCs Frost and Howard head to Gavin's mum Brenda's house. Hello. Hello. Hi, Glenda. Where's he been sleeping? Has he ever done this before at all? No. 
Have you felt like his like mental health's gone downhill lately, or? Well, it does, but I look at all that lot, yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. Glad. Brenda doesn't have access to Gavin's bank account, but she has been going through the statements she discovered at his flat earlier. There were papers thrown all over, weren't they? He's kept ordering that much stuff. What, do you know what he's been ordering? Anything and everything. Yeah. And that's why Brods and Lucky's been writing over things. Have he's you... been scribbling all over everything. One of them letters is asking her, can I have some money back? Got this woman, oh, all sorts of notes, and it looks as if she's pleased him and every penny he's got. I don't know who she is. Gavin's paperwork has revealed evidence of significant payments to an unknown woman. Just to update you, um, basically being told that this woman, whoever she is, he's been giving her quite a lot of money. Can you just go back to the address and just have another look inside, see if there's anything to do with her? I am very protective of Gavin because of his problems. He believes everybody's good. And they're not. You just think they're going to have a normal life, don't you? But he hadn't had it. Gavin was a clever lad. He wasn't best at everything he went in for. When he was going into puberty, it didn't happen. His voice wasn't breaking, nothing was happening. And they call him a pansy and also it's because he didn't, his voice hadn't broke. So he had all that to go through. I took him to the doctors and that's when he said, I think he's got Kalman syndrome. They don't change the intermanhood without help. And it's very rare. I were heart broke for him. It has affected him a lot. He started taking drugs to make him feel better about what were happening to him. And they gave him voices in his head. They had nobody else to turn to but me. I can be there for him, but I can't sort it out. The officers looking for evidence of the unknown woman have been let into Gavin's flat by a relative. And do you know any of his other friends or anything like that? He's hooked up with her, he's gone really down here. What do you know about her, if anything? I don't know. I've only seen her once. Right. So do you know how much money he's got in his bank account now? Not a lot at the moment. Not a lot. Like I said, he had 40,000 last year and most of that's got. Plus he, he got a, an extra six thousand pound bank loan. Have you ever mentioned like he'd been buying anything for her or yeah. anything like that? What's he bought? Two cars. A BMW one, I think, a box or. The thing is that considering to be really they've only known each other a month. And he's bought two cars. That's what it's like. Yeah. He wants to buy friends for the thing. He's clearly really yeah. vulnerable though if he's going oh, yeah. to buy people. Oh, yeah. Cars. Yeah. Gavin is an adult and he can give gifts to people, but it's just making sure that he's making that choice on his own and he's got the capacity to make these choices. This comes a bit of a line of being kind and taking advantage of as well. I'm just wondering whether it's coerced him into doing something that he didn't want to do, like threatened him or yeah. forced him or, or got his bank details and done it herself. How can I help? Can I request assistance, please, for a male? It recently went for a Mr. Medium Risk. Almost 40 hours after the student was last seen, police have been alerted. Where is he outside? Sheffield? Yeah. Allen. Who has he presented himself to? University cops. 
the young man has been detained by university security staff. He can't account for his last 24 hours. He told me a lot about God. We've managed to stall him whilst we get all the cops here to speak to both his mum and his father. So he has had some contact with them over the phone. Proceed. Delta 74, we're just coming up stat 6. Hello, it's PC Kurt Fitter from Stingle Police Station. I'm just hoping to speak with the mental health team regarding a gentleman. Could you put me through, please? The student's behaviour prompts police to request his temporary detention for mental health assessment. It's surprised that he's been reported missing and so on, uh, but he's just acting pretty peculiar, to be honest. He can't really account for where he's been the last 24 hours, sort of diverges away from that when you when you try to speak to him about it and he and he just sort of keeps returning back to God and speaking of God and apparently he's told these officers that he's from Zion. So we have actually got an ambulance to check his capacity as well. Is there a slot for him there? Wonderful, thank you very much. It's very important that we do this, okay? So this is for your best interest. So we want to get you some help, OK? It is one of the stranger missing persons investigations that I've dealt with. But I'm happy he was located and taken for a mental health assessment. I think that at that time, that would have been the best outcome, so he could have been assessed and to just make sure that he was well and he didn't need support from mental health services. Please have help. I'm just bringing to report a, a patient missing on a section two. What's happened? We let him out for a walk on the building and he has not returned to the ward. A neighbouring police force has been alerted. Just weeks after being found in Sheffield, the student has gone missing again. This time from a mental health ward in West Yorkshire. And there is safeguarding concerns regarding a, a church that he's involved with. There is one particular person at this church. He has been texting, trying to get him to not to take his medication. When he does stop taking his medication, he believes that he's hearing the voice of God. He's at risk of abuse and exploitation by others. As the hospital is within their force area, West Yorkshire Police start searching for him. They follow a number of different leads. But there are no sightings of the student for two weeks. Good afternoon, Flavio Hitchcliffe. I sighted a gentleman who reported as missing to be in Sheffield yesterday. A call has just come in from a mental health worker who thinks they've spotted him in Sheffield. with West Yorkshire Police and then get any further info and tell that we can from them. Because he was a Section 2 patient initially, there's still the underlying mental health issues. At Rotherham Police Station near Sheffield, Inspector Chris Milnes is now heading up the investigation. So moving forward, obviously we've taken ownership. He's not been seen for a significant amount of time now. And we've got very, very limited detail in terms of other associates. The fact that he'd been in a medical centre and walked out is, is concerning for us. We don't know his mental state. Is he at risk of a serious episode? He's not been spoken to for a number of weeks now, and the sight is quite vague. But if it is him, why come back to the South Yorkshire area? A missing person report has got some ties to this address which has been hired out as a church. The last time the student went missing, police were unable to locate the church group which his parents believed was exploiting him. I think we have to go back round to the front, yeah. Finding out more about this group has now become a priority. On my maps, it's saying it's behind us. I think it's that. It's the right place because there's a 
poster on the wall. There's a telephone number on there. The promotional poster is linked to the same organisation first named by the student's father. It's Annabelle calling from South Yorkshire Police. Are you OK? What's the matter? I'm just ringing in relation to a missing person. We've got some concerns for him at this time. I don't know. I, I don't know him. I, I've been in that shop for 10 years. The church is where people walk in, they walk out. He may have been there at a point. I don't know. OK, OK. What, what day does your, ch sorry, your church meet on? One date. Yeah. Why do you want to know? Just I thought you doesn't come to that church. Yeah, but somebody else might have recognised him if we can just come and show you a picture on one day when the church meet. No, 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 no. That is scary for people. It's not a criminal offence to go to church. Yeah. He may have been there, but I don't know. He's not there now. He's not there now. All right, thank you for your okay. time. Thank you. Bye thank bye. you. Bye bye. He does go to that church. Various people have spoken to connections with the church, all at this moment in time quite evasive. Police have reached out to every church contact they can find, but no one is able to help. Some claiming they don't know him, some claiming that they, they, they do, but they haven't seen him, which obviously adds to the, the concern that he is possibly being exploited. Inspector Milnes needs to assess the likely risk to the student. We're not getting any information from them at all, which makes it very difficult. Sometimes people don't want to disclose things to the police. They may assume the police are looking for people for the wrong reasons. But when we do get that reluctance to sort of engage, it, it, it naturally raises those suspicions. Is he being exploited? Is he under duress? or maybe he doesn't want to be found and they are trying to hide him. He's obviously vulnerable with his mental health issues um, and, he, and he's at continuous risk. He may well be in now a state of crisis yeah. in the care of people who aren't necessarily interested in his welfare and his well-being. At this stage, I, I think there's, there is that, that heightened risk. The decision is taken to classify the student as a high-risk missing person. It does give us extra powers to monitor the mobile phone, email accounts, social media accounts, bank account. It is intrusive, but it is also necessary. We just need to have some proof of life. Good evening, sorry to bother you. My name's Rob Greensmith. I'm one of the sergeants at South Yorkshire Police in Rotherham is still missing. Sergeant Rob Greensmith calls the student's parents to help him compile personal data. The SPOC who does the investigations, tr trying to trace the mobile phones, has asked me just to do a couple of inquiries. All information will be passed to a police single point of contact known as a SPOC. I don't suppose, could you just confirm that phone? Is it one, is it one that ends in a one eight? Just uh, to give you, by way of a bit of an update, at the minute they are looking at to triangulate his phone to see if we can find out exactly where he is. To be no contact for weeks, then to find out possibly he's, you know, in Sheffield with people that aren't assisting, has got to be horrific for them. The only thing we can do is outline all the inquiries we're doing to try and locate this young man. Given the powers we've got under mental health, like, you know, if we do if we do find him in the street and you know, it was deemed necessary that he needed to be uh, detained under those powers, we'd do that. We do understand what these people are going through. I have two kids and the thought of them disappearing into the ether and, and you know, hearing absolutely nothing from them for weeks, I'd be absolutely frantic. And that's why we will do his utmost to find them. In Deep Car, it's now been two and a half days since 58-year-old Gavin was spotted leaving his flat. Okay, can you tell me exactly what you've seen? 
A call is coming in to police about a man behaving strangely outside a shopping centre. He keeps wandering into the car park. He was asleep round the back of the building. He doesn't seem to remember how he got here or how long he's been here. Right, I found his coat. Can't see, see him. Yeah, the coat he had on, the hide his jacket. The call is from Meadow Hall, a large shopping centre on the outskirts of Sheffield. It's 16 miles from the service station where staff were concerned about a man who was buying a high-vis jacket and 10 miles from Gavin's home. Hello, I'm in all control room. Hello, it's Emily calling from the police. PCs Emily Munden and Becky McKechnie are travelling towards Meadow Hall. A security guard there has been checking CCTV. He leaves our orange zone to car park and he heads towards uh, Weedon Street along Meadow Hall Drive. So at least we've got a direction of travel. So I think it's going to be a case of literally tracing it on CCTV. I don't suppose there's someone in at the moment who can view your CCTV. The officers start checking for any cameras on the street the man was seen heading down. And where's that? Sorry, that's Weedon Street. That's Meadow Hall. Ah, OK, yes, that would be perfect. Meadow Hall in the direction of Weedon Street. Chappy may or may not be wearing a top, but he's got blue jeans on uh, and on his own, we believe. That bloke's topless, oh. that's him. That's him. It's the first confirmed sighting of Gavin since he was seen getting into a cab three nights ago. There he is. He's there. Yeah. And he crosses, doesn't he? Seeing him on the CCTV, it's a bit of relief to know he's alive, but doesn't seem OK. He doesn't look to me like he'd been looking after himself. And is that your last camera that yeah. we're tracking? Yeah, exactly. He's a vulnerable man, and we need, to, we need to locate him as soon as we can. But the recording is already several hours old, and police still have to work out where Gavin headed next. Hello, PC Speed from South Yorkshire Police. Meanwhile, PC Liesel Speed has been calling family members to find out more about the woman Gavin allegedly bought cars for. Is she a girlfriend? No. So they're just, just friends? Do you know where they may meet up? No, no, not there, no. OK. He's been to her house and she's been there to his flat. This is the West I've seen him. Right. I've never seen his flap in the state he's been now. Please, all. Yeah, go ahead. The Bobbies are going to check CCTV. So, priority now is go and check his flat. Receive. She just wants us to try and see if we can find any paperwork relating to this woman. He's got this friend that he's bought some cars for. We really need to get the information about these cars, about these friends. Please, love. Gavin. Hello. Hello. Gavin. Yeah. yeah. Gavin, we've been a bit worried about you. Have you just yeah. got back just now? Yeah, I've just got back now. Been away stranded out on a most way service for two weeks. Have you? With no money, I've had no to eat for two weeks. Have it's you not? Some water, yeah. Go inside and have a chat, is that okay? Yeah. You're not yeah, in any trouble, fine. we just want to make sure you're okay. No, Dad's 6 Tango, he has arrived home. Hello, Dad. Hello. Hello. Um, as we've attended, um, so it's just that, you know, we're currently stat six with uh, Gavin. Brilliant, mate, I'll wait for an update. It's a bit of a relief physically seeing someone that you know has been missing for a long time and for them to just appear in front of you is quite rare as well. Usually we're running around after people and locate them somewhere rather than them come to you. It was good seeing his face. <laughs> yeah. well, How come you went to the services to start with? Because I'm going down London and I had to tell them to stop their services. Right. Worst mistake I made. So which, which way have you walked then? I can't remember. I had no money for anywhere to stop and no money for a bus. Did you come through town or have you walked along the main roads? I forgot. No. Okay, so where did you sleep? 
Woods, yeah. Do you know which woods? No. No. I felt like death. Did you? And I felt this terrible. I've got uh, voices uh, and evil spirits in me. Have you? Yeah. What's your relationship like? Has she got a couple of your cars or something? I, I uh, bought one for myself and I didn't want it. Okay. Because there's too much insurance. Yeah. So I give it her and she's paying me weekly and I bought her another car. Oh, she's paying me weekly for. How come you're buying them for her to then pay you back weekly? Because she... she's been best friend. Right, okay. Can she yeah. not afford it? Just... No. Right. This is a number that you can call 24 hours a day, so okay, they might be worth cool. speaking to if at any point yeah. you sort of feel like either you're a bit confused or you're not sure what's happening, you want to speak to someone about yeah, what's well, going I'm on. I'm confused, I know what's happening. Will yeah. you be okay? Yeah, I've been yeah. fine all the time, apart from voices and that, and he was okay. pretty. He's not actually known that he's gone missing. He's just sort of left without thinking. He had been missing for two plus days. And although he didn't come to any harm, he was clearly having a, a mental health episode. You know, it needed to be flagged to mental health services. We were putting a referral form in relation to that, but also concerns about exploitation. Bye, bye, Gavin. Right, see you later, Gavin. Thank God for that. I could kill him sometimes, but <laughs> when he goes off like this, but he's a good lad, really. He used to be on the Sheffield Outreach team for people with schizophrenia, and I could ring them all if there were any problems. But then they all disbanded. So I had nobody to turn to. This is why I look after him. I'm still there. <laughs> but I'm not going to be here much longer. So I've just got to sort yourself out. All I want is for Gavin to have a happy life. together but I've got Brendan and Reese who've been working out today just to sort of have a catch up with what we've done through the day. While police have been unable to make headway with the missing students' associates, heightened powers to investigate his finances have produced a lead. We've identified some transactions on his bank account at York Station. We need to chase up uh, BTP regarding the transaction at York for that CCTV see if it is our missing person using his bank account or whether it is somebody else or if he's in company with somebody. His bank card could be used by somebody else. They could have access to his bank account. Somebody could be forcing him to, to buy something. What we need to do now is verify that he's the student. We need that CCTV. That is our main line of inquiry. sent through is a couple of stills but they've managed to identify a male that they believe is our missing person. British Transport Police have just sent through CCTV images from York Station. It's in York Station at 1625 which coincides with the transaction I believe. What B2B officer is saying is they followed him from York. He travels alone uh, get on the train and he gets off at Doncaster at 16.47. Uh, he then gets on the Sheffield train at 17.20 hours. Obviously there's a resemblance at this stage. I don't believe that I could categorically say that that's him. No, I couldn't. What might be the easiest um, and quickest is probably contacting Mum. My name's Reese. I'm a police officer from Rotherham. We've received some uh, images from a train station in York. I'm just wondering, have you got an email address that I could send them to to see if you could confirm if it's him or not? You can, yeah, you're confirming that's him. 
That's great. Thank you ever so much. It's now clear the student has travelled from North Yorkshire to Sheffield, but no one knows the reason for his journey or where he may be headed next. Spoken to the Spock again this morning. What they're saying is his Android phone is linked to a Google account and that has been used at 4 o'clock this morning. News has just come in from the Spock. The student's Google account has been accessed at an address in Rotherham. It's either him using that, that internet at that address or another person using his Gmail account. To be able to track that phone, it's powerful data, it's powerful information. It does provide a specific address. It's a breakthrough. We need to move as quickly as possible because there's a lot of risk. PCs Hannah Wallhead and Rhys Thompson are sent to check the address where the trace is coming from. Rhys, we've got landlord's details and a contact number for the occupant, who we believe is already linked to him previously and involved with the church at Sheffield. The tenant is the friend from church who denied that he had been with the student when he first went missing. It's like a keyboard or something that's in the living room. Hello. Am I right to come in? Reese, have you done the further inquiry at the address? Ultimately, he's not there. Um, he said he's not seen him for a couple of weeks. I've explained that he's obviously used the IP address for that. Um, how? He has said to me that he has previously used his laptop to log into the emails. So it may be a coincidence that he hasn't logged out properly. They've been on his laptop, and that's why the IP address was pinging. Right, okay. He was a little bit evasive to us. He has allowed us full search of the, the property. We have nothing at this moment in time to suggest that the friend's lying, but it, it just doesn't add up, it doesn't feel right. I think he's hiding something. What's been said? I think he knows where he is, he just doesn't want to tell us. We've been investigating missing people a number of years, and when you get that information and that, and that data, nine times out of ten, it, it leads you to locating that person. Telecontrol, we've got anyone free please to attend an emergency response to the University Medical Centre. We've got reports that a high risk misc is attending. A team is dispatched in Sheffield after police receive an alert. We need to get into town as quick as possible. The student is at the medical centre. So, you ready for an update? Go ahead. Uh, he's left without us seeing him. Received. Miss Pers spoke to the doctor who's been inside so far. So far. She's deemed that he's got capacity. Uh, she's not got any concerns that he's going to harm himself. He's uh, come here willingly. She's basically saying that uh, he does want to receive mental health help and is willing to do that on a, on a voluntary basis, which uh, she's organising. He's not willing uh, to give the location of where he's staying. Received. It's a little bit disappointed, really, because you want to find them and you want to have that interaction with them. Um, However, this case and the student, it was, it was it's quite unique. Given we have spoken to professionals who have seen him, he's deemed him to have capacity to come and go and make his own choices, and he's not at any sort of risk. I'm satisfied now that we can come away and no longer treat him as a missing person. So once we've physically located him, whether that be us or a partner agency, it provides us with that information that they're no longer missing, and it, it doesn't really warrant a police response anymore. It doesn't want to see police anyway. I'm quite happy now that we close it down. Ongoing concerns were around his vulnerability and the possible exploitation in terms of the, the association with the church. 
However, the student is an adult with that new information from the doctor around his mental health. And we have to then go back to respecting that individual's privacy. In terms of the student, having contact with family, we are only really able to tell them that he, he is alive and he's safe and well, so that his family can be reassured that he is all right. When I went missing, uh, absolutely terrified. I didn't know what to do, because nobody would get me a taxi. As well as being possessed by voices, I had a lot of things on my mind. I was having a very hard time of it. I started drinking a lot to forget my problems, Kelman syndrome, not developing. That was what started me uh, heavy drinking and uh, heavy drug taking. I never do anything by half, so I always do it to excess, everything, including spending money. A friend of mine, he were out to work, and I lent him uh, £2,000, and he won't even pay me a penny back, and £4,000 for a woman for some cars. She took advantage of me like, like he did. I've learnt my lesson, finally. I'm feeling... Very positive and fantastic. Now I'm free from drug, illicit drugs. No voice and I'm back at home. I've just got me mental work again now, helping me keep well. I've been slowly unpacking and tidying up. I've got a good mother. The eight main things in the life family. Now I'm looking forward to the rest of my life. I've got it all planned. Details of help and support are available at bbc.co.uk slash action line.
Thank <laughs> you.